Hey guys, welcome to the designsketchbook.com. I'm Shutak and today we are going to see how I draw unlimited sneakers when I face the blank page. So the first thing to do is to draw the shoe last. So you may wonder, what is this green form? This is a shoe last and this is what the shoemaker used to create your sneakers on top of it. And this is what we are going to do with our sketches. So basically when you have this shoe last, we are going to use this and create some templates. Right here, templates. And from these templates, we are going to draw our shoes on top of it. Like for example, I can draw the shoe right here, uh, like this, like this, the U foot right here, and so on, and the logo. So this is super fast. And as you can hear, the space here. This is for the shoe. This is a standard form of a foot. Like let's say you have the foot right here, you have a small bow here, you have this part area like this. This is going to be the foot right here. Okay, so this is what we use as a template to draw our sneakers on top of it. And then here will be the space for the outsole. Hopla. Standard foot, standard shape, standard form of a foot okay this is what is going to give the shape of your shoes and this is what once again the shoe designer the shoemaker is going to use to create the shoe that you have designed right here okay and the right thing to do when you want to draw a limited um, design limited creativity is to draw multiple shoe lines right here on your on your page that here is on iPad with more folio trays. I draw many, many, many of them, and then you can draw the shoes on top. And I invite you to get your free book, Getting the 37 Secrets of the Sneaker Designers, that is going to help you to get started. So part two, shoe design. So here for the creativity tips, what I like to do is to play with the elements. As you can see here, here you have the heel cap, here you have what you call the toe cap, here it should be the U float. This is like for the anchor. This is what we call here the quarter, the vamp. Um, basically, if we want to decompose, let's see, play with the shoe element or components right here. So this is the most basic shoe components, and we are going to play with them. So we got the shoe last right here. I'm drawing up uh, pretty fast like this. And as you know, this is here the heel cap. Here. This is what we call the U throat. Up uh, the U throat because from the front is actually <coughs> a U, then you have the lace in between. <laughs> right here of course you have the lace you have the tongue mm -hmm. sometime here you have a small tag also for the ankle uh, you got the toe cap toe cap this part is called the vamp this part is called the quarter and then the quarter is interesting because it's a zone that is really good for the branding where you can add the logo okay it's here logo branding it could be the tree type stripes it could be the switch of Nike and so on okay that's the basic elements and from here you got of course the outsole that is below This is the ground floor, and this is the bottom line curve of the shoe nest. Okay, and I like to apply. I like to give some space here, right here, and this part actually can be uh, have different height, different. Like for example, you have a shoe with some heels, you can actually elevate this part, maybe like. Remember when Sergio Rossi was doing uh, sneakers? 
got some height it was really 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 cool okay so you can play with the height here Yeah, also here for the toe can be changed also peep, peep, peep. the toe spring spring my wedding is <laughs> a bit crazy okay and so basically when you know the element that like you know the basics um, let's try here know your basics You can customize every single part. So by knowing like the different elements, it helps you to know where you go. Uh, it's not like you are totally random and wondering, hey, okay, what can I draw facing your blank page? Okay, now you have the different elements. You have like one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About eight, eight to ten elements on these shoes, and then this is what you're going to tackle them one by one and customize your shoe from there, okay? So once again, this is just for playful, this is a research, and you create along the way. You don't have to uh, to think too hard at the beginning what you want. You just draw along the way and you draw how you feel and you see what you come up. That's one way of tackling the, the blank page pretty fast. And I quite like this uh, embroidery feeling. I'm just doing like this. See, this is embroidery feeling right here. And trying to, to, to draw super fast, catching fast your ideas is actually a very talented and uh, useful way of communication where you can communicate to your colleagues, your clients, your ideas to, um, to your boss, to your team, to the marketing and so on to convince of your ideas super fast without spending too much time. And the reason why, the, the, the reason why that why you want to um, uh, to sketch fast is mainly to multiply your ideas, multiply ideas, because quantity matters in creativity. Uh, instead of spending uh, one hour, like super, 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 super long time, like imagine you have a giant hourglass right here. And then very slow, you got drawing, one drawing, and maybe, maybe it will come out good. We don't know. So one hour with an idea that may be awkward, and this is not what we want. We want to have like maybe in, let's say you draw for one hour for the same time, but multiple shoes, many, 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 many. And why this one is the maybe, you are multiplying your chance to find some golden ideas, golden nuggets maybe. <laughs> gold ideas maybe one two three four and from there when you will extract them these gold ideas uh, you can actually go go back and draw a smaller selections and spend more times finally to one or two or three proposals okay you narrow down you start from many many ideas let's say this triangle to something that you want okay so this is a gold gold gems that potato <laughs> okay general to details and here for the ideas is something very wide ideas that you let the um, randomness come in into the pictures and then slowly you sculpt your ideas and you come up with others with another one that is more precise all right and for here's what I'm doing for this design is to uh, merge the components. Like for example here, it's right here, merge components. I try to somehow break the rules of the basics that we learn. And what I do here is, for example, I got the anchor here, I got the heel, and what if I combine them? And this can actually give you some, maybe some more support for the foot right here, maybe for basketball players. Uh, this part here for the toe is merging with the quarter, go to the back. Up la is something that is creating new things, new stories. It's like enveloping the, uh, the foot, enveloping the shoe, but could create more support. So once again here, we want to beat the blank page and to get started instead of trying to 
spend hours and hours looking for inspirations and then only draw. No, you draw first and then you try to come up with ideas that what you have in mind in your own references and then create some stories. This is not a unique, this, this drawing here doesn't exist by itself. Um, it's not like a superstar drawing, it's actually what we want in our board is to have multiple drawings that coexist together, where the ideas are going to link each other. Because maybe in this drawing here, you have one detail that you feel cool that you will import and you put it here. And this design here will be better than that one. It's what we call iteration. Hopla. Iteration. And then you have another one, another one, and so on. Maybe some other ideas from outside will come up. This is kind of chaos, but it's really like a creative chaos where you love uh, navigating inside. Okay. Up now, creative chaos. It's cool. <laughs> Oops, I clicked there. Okay, let's carry on. Mm -mm -mm. So I try to add a buckle right here. Mm -mm -mm. So I keep going and maximum when you draw, try to spend uh, let's say between two to five minutes. Okay, fast sketch is between two to five minutes. And then after that, when you draw something like super fast, do, 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 rough, uh, later on, like after drawing many, many, many of them, you can come back later. Come back later. Come back later for the drawings that you feel like are worth to spend more time okay because remember like product design is about productivity it's not something that you want to put all your heart in one drawing you put your heart on the journey you put your heart on the process um, productivity is do not love one unique sketch like what we used to do when we were a kid, we were drawing something and we love our sketch, we sign it, we feel so proud of it, which is cool. However, in during the research phase, what you want to do is to love the journey. Okay? Love to create so much more ideas instead of your drawing. Because that's once again the research phase. This is where you want to cherish ideas. Okay. And sketching is a tool to convey your message. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I really love drawing with dynamism because it's actually uh, giving you some free lines all around, some organic curves and so on. Can you see here something more particular? Try to be daring also uh, in your proposal, daring proposals especially if you are doing a portfolio. This daring proposal is what the recruiters, Hopla, how to draw recruiters, <laughs> say with a tie, up, up, are going to love it because they will remember you. Up, let's look the ideas, how, boop, boop, like this. They will remember these daring proposals. This is something that is worth uh, mentioning and maybe talk to their friend, wow, a plan, maybe the colleague or the wife, the kids. Da, 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 da. And then when you chit chat together about your project and they remember it, then you win something. You have been standing out from the crowd. Okay. So don't start to be always realistic at the beginning. Um, push beyond the limits. The limits. See, as you can see here, I got this line is from the previous sketch. This is once again iteration. I took from a previous sketch a detail that I like, and for the next drawing, I reapply it again because I wanted to explore more instead of trying to work on this one. Okay, let's do this, 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 this. I can create variation. And that's fun. And then I customize it in a different way with another uh, interpretation. Okay. 
So create variation is allowing you also to, to be more creative. And this part here is fun because uh, this, all these details, where do they come from? It's from a recent memory. A recent memory. It's things that I saw on TikTok in some videos of people saving the totals. And I felt like these details is quite hypnotizing. And no, no, I wanted to see how I can apply it on the shoes. That's it. And so that's a trick also to face a blank. If you face a blank page, try to see your database of recently what you saw, what marked you, what has been, what have you noticed that is worth maybe to experiment in your design of the shoes. But I wanted to make it more modern, and actually, I I like to merge it with Shapi, with a museum, something which is very technical and mechanical, and like the robots in Skyfy. So you have to draw with your feeling, and when you draw with your feeling, as you can see here as well, here was something very intricate because you feel like all the details. So try with the feelings, and here's something more curvy. This is why when I like to to teach it my courses is that uh, try to have three kind of emotion maybe joyful zen uh, something which is uh, uh, angry and try to randomly draw something maybe joyful is something that is simple and rounded i don't know that's my interpretation maybe yours would be different maybe zen would be in simple curve uh, minimalist angry is something like you can control it's going to be suddenly you realize that this is going to be edgy uh, this is going to be more elongated like when this one is more compact more like protective more like an egg bubbles here is something more like uh, randomness is like up uh, you're drawing something that doesn't make sense and this is how you can actually draw with your feelings getting some new forms inspire uh, extract your, your sensations, how you want to convey it into your sneaker. It's pretty, uh, it becomes something pretty intuitive. And what I love with it is that this is a randomness <laughs> that makes every designer unique. Every designer unique because you will have your own interpretation, your own emotion. This is great pretty related to, to art. Sometimes you, you saw some creative art that it looks a bit, a bit nonsense, a bit kind of useless, and you see, oh, I could have done it. Yes, but we didn't do it. That person do it, and another creative person would have done something else. And this is conveying different emotions and different feeling that you, you could create. And this is what I like is that if I tell you uh, a certain feeling like joyful, certain person will interpret a certain way, another person will interpret another way because we have different background, okay? And different background, different way of reacting to the elements, different memory, and all this is going to create different type of design. And that's what you want to be as a designer is to be unique and non-replaceable. It's not enough to sketch well. It's you have to be have you have to get your own style and create and use your memory your souvenirs how you your ability to combine ideas to create unique designs and that's what we are exercising, exercising here for writing the blank page <laughs> okay here is like when to be more creative you can look for some technicality technical answers i would say maybe physical like in sports i remember when i was in um working at adidas there was a project for tennis shoe that i learned from uh, let's say you have a tennis player well, i'm not sure that this is the right postures but tennis players blah, he's right here do a stick man this is a racket and the ball right here Ooh. okay and then they have a lot of movement that is going to left to right, keep going here, puff, puff. And when they stop, we have to block it here. So what if there is pieces here and extra pieces? Let's say you have a shoe and you have extra pieces here that is going to help to block. Pop, 
but, but, but. see if this minimalist drawing is actually helping to understand an idea i don't have to uh, i do not have to draw something very realistic there you have the also view from bottom right here and you would realize that the tennis shoe is mostly wider here on this part let's say let's let's see what if we add some extra material here would that help the tennis player to perform more <laughs> okay so look for problems looks for what the movement or sports people are using and what could you do to improve their performance so I do not hesitate to exaggerate, especially for um, for the beginning of the research. We have all the time later to translate it in different way, to make it more subtle, but we want to block it. Okay? So just draw with the flow, don't try to be ultra realistic, just do so, add some patterns, create without much thinking, like sometimes you fail like right here, I'm just doing something, I don't like it, I control Z to undo. I like this type of blocks and I will over, over exaggerate them, <laughs> like here, it's kind of the Avengers, with the big, the, the, the big guy with made of stones. And here is like how it's decompositing for the switch. I'm getting some, a lot of uh, freedom to create stuff. Like no, normally a logo is something that you can touch. It's kind of a holy logo. You, you, you have to preserve it. But what if you want to, 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 to change it, you want to modify it and so on. Like recently you can see the logo of Nike that is reverse, like on some design or like the opposite side. That is pretty cool as well. And yeah, so I'm using this, this block here, I use this in the pattern, I use it here for, as, as if it was disappearing like pixels. Uh, yeah, so many, many words. Try to also in your mind uh, add some words to describe add words or use words in your mind to describe stuff. All right, the designsketchbook.com. So this is a black and white. And as you can see, oh, okay, part three for the Zen touch up. All right, right here. So as you can see, let's go back a little bit. Uh, where is the layers? Can you see the layers effect? Here with the line, once again, top. With or without the lines, all these lines is uh, the, the drawings of the shoe last, shoe last layers. Okay, so that was basically this. With the construction line, the contour lines, right here. So once again, if you want to know the details, how to draw the shoe last, I invite you to download the sneaker books on my blog, you'll get all the details right there. And then on top of it, you have another layer here layer of design right here so you got the shoe last which is here but you are drawing on top of it so you can get your shoe design and whenever like this is finished you just up uh, off this one to make it invisible and all this line disappear okay and this is how you will gain clarity see how overcrowded is it now and then is going to be much much clearer. So now for the touch up is the Zen, uh, the Zen area, the Zen stage, when the most difficult part is behind us. Okay, touch up. We go Zen, because <laughs> you can take your time and you can spend like maybe twenty one hour me one hours as long as you want twenty minutes to one hour up to you is some small details that you want to refine here and there or reflect on your ideas how you can improve stuff up 
can create more clarity by adding hatching, color blocking. Here we go. Which part are shiny? Like here, like for example, this part means some shine. Very fast, you just do outline something. Let's say you have this shape, about a sphere, you want to add some shine, it's like this. You have, so you have some shines up from 2D, it becomes 3D. Okay, 3D with a leaf shine. Very simple. <laughs> So here, if you notice, this is a sandal, and even though the shoe lasts, uh, right here, draw, up, là. right here, you use this as an underlay, then you can use some shoes that are pretty open, maybe you have here the toe, here you got the sling, like this, okay? So you still have to use a shoe last. Shoe last needed always. Don't start to try to draw the shoe like this, like this. Then you get lost because you don't have the proportions. You need proportions. You you need this as a guide. Okay. It will make your life so much easier. So if you want to beat the blank page once again, you start with the shoe last. One in, in, forbidden. Okay, always use the shoeless. I like to add also some little uh, notes, some words, some brands, some series number. This is some crunchy details that is helping to, to, to make your design more realistic. Okay, so this is during the Zen phase that we usually add and you can eat before or not but at the end phase is pretty it's pretty cool because you can feel of the compositions sometimes on the shoes you have the designs the these little notes could be here uh, maybe here maybe it could be some tags maybe it could be a tag here you can think of different way of adding them maybe here i don't know <laughs> so it's really free 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 flow but free flow is it's a free creativity on, on that there is no specific rules um, you look for the composition that you like so part four fast color so for the fast color i'm going to use uh, this tool right here let's put something brighter this tool right here okay this is going to help you to paint super fast because you are going to draw by contour and then you will paint inside while um, the regular way is with, let's say I want to draw this piece I'm going to do like this try to not go outside uh, maybe like this and take ages of course I can have a bigger uh, brush but I will have to make sure that I'm not going too much out and this part is this tool is actually convenient for speed and rough also can be much details but for now we're going to use it rough Yep, here we go and then I can always adjust later it doesn't matter much that if you you, you put too much out too much inside it's, you just want to have a quick idea and, and preview of what you want okay so you can play with the different color palette of Morfolio uh, they are pretty nice because they have already created some combination of colors that goes well together mm -mm -mm -mm. So notice here, like this area, basically there's three, la three, <laughs> well, three layers of colors. I go first, the, the, the rule is from general to details, again, general to details. I go to the bigger surface first, and then I cover the smaller one. See, I did cover the big yellow, then after the big blue, and then I go into the detail here. So there is one here, there is another two here, which is on top of it, more like the lighting, and here is a reflection. Okay, one, two, three, and this really give you this cartoon effect that we could call also like cell shading right here that give you very fast the preview of the colors and the volume. Mm -mm. Okay, I'll do some different tests. Here we go. 
go and here is a tool I pretty like in Morfolio that if you click here and that's what you have here you have some different holes that we're going to paint on top of it and we remain this shape instead of creating a brush that giving this is pretty cool I think like related to realistic to re real tools that we want to use make it more playful yeah why not <clears throat> now I erase some of the textures to make it less crowded less heavy it's much lighter that way and I also play with the um, yep, let's go back a bit I also play with the opacity, like here is very dark, right? So I just add it them and then I lighten and make it more light for the opacity also. Okay? It just has to be subtle. So here we go for the next one. <laughs> Let's make it blue. Mm -mm -mm. See, I add, add this little dot of colors, getting some grains, here some camo for some text, some graphics on it, make it more cool. Mm -mm -mm. So I'm testing some different size and different of uh, pattern I could use. <laughs> Same, don't spend too much time on each of them. So choose your color palette. And for the color palette, you can take inspiration in fashion as well, uh, or flags, like when you, like, let's say, like the green and the yellow is a pretty common combination of color for fashion. This is actually the, the flag of Brazil. Uh, pink and gray works very well. Pink and black works very well as well. Uh, you can go to the chromatic wheels also to see what are the combinary, combi the colors that are complementary, and so on. And you, you use this library of different color combo in your fashion uh, fashion creation is going to help you to to work a lot faster because you will gain in experience. And as you notice here, you see like it's going out, it's going out. I'm very very sketchy uh, on my things. Be <laughs> sketchy for your colors as well. For colors too, because the purpose here once again is to just come up with some ideas very fast and to have a preview of it okay here we go all right so it's pretty much that's it for this session i hope you enjoy it and I invite you to make a try and sketch with Morfolio. It's pretty fun. And if you dream of drawing your pro stickers by your own, but you don't know how to start, I invite you to download the 37 secret of the sneaker designers on the blog. And it's free. That's it. So I hope you enjoy this new format. It's something pretty new for me. And I see you for the next video.